we're at Millstone Lane. Behind me, Millstone Lane leads into the Town Hall Square. In front of me, it leads to the Ring Road and the Newark. And over there is Friar Lane. And if you want a historical perspective on it, that side of the road, uh, the side of Millstone Lane, that was the line of the Roman and medieval wall. So we're just, just outside the medieval limits of the city. Now we've come here because this is the site of the barn, which became the first permanent home of the Methodist congregation in Leicester. When Wesley first came to Leicester, a little group gathered, and a man who encouraged them was William Lewis, um, a Presbyterian. He attended Great Meeting, which was then Presbyterian and Congregationalist. And he was a man of very wide sympathies, and he admired Wesley's zeal and Wesley's commitment to urban preaching and he made available the front room of his house. Now, where that house was, no one is quite sure, but given that at the end there, where the, uh, the ring road now runs, was actually High Cross Street at one time, it could be that the house was really quite near here. And this was why, this might be why, he came and purchased the barn. The barn is a mystery. The old barn. Lots of people refer to it and nobody really knows what its origins were except that it was obviously medieval. But what does that mean? Was it a secular barn? Did it belong to some of the large houses that gathered around this area near the Newark? Was it a church barn? Uh, at one time people, I think rather hoping that we could find an association with Greyfriars and Richard III etc, said it must have belonged to Greyfriars, because Greyfriars isn't very far away in that direction. But that's unlikely because the Friars, the Franciscans, didn't go in for having lots of people attached to their um, settlement who tithed and therefore there would be no need to have a barn to put all their, their produce in. So if it was ecclesiastical, maybe it belonged either to St Mary in the Newark, which has disappeared, now underneath the uh, De Montfort University, or St Mary de Castro. Either way, it was an ancient structure that had been used for all sorts of things. We do know that it had a thatched roof, and we do know that there was no ceiling. You went in and you looked up and you saw the timbers and the inside of the thatching. So it had to be lit with great chandeliers and candles. Mr Lewis, William Lewis, bought this building, gave it to the Methodists. Unfortunately, upon his death, the will was challenged by his son, who claimed that all his father's property should have been passed to him. So his widow, who had the same charitable dispositions as her husband, he, she, she bought it once more from the son and once more gave it to the Methodist, this time making quite sure that the Methodist title to the land was a good one. So here the very early Methodists met. John Brandon, the soldier from the Newark, Ginny Sykes, who was a wool gatherer, worked in old materials. They met here, and to this place John Wesley would come on his visits to Leicester, sometimes preaching twice a day here. So it was our first chapel. At one point, the chapel became unusable. So it was demolished and a new building set up also for the Methodists. And then, 1815, the business begins of moving to where we now are in Bishop Street. Looking at the site now, you can't see that there is actually very much that would tell you that this was a religious site. But that is also true of Friar Lane, because Friar Lane Baptist Church was just over the way here. 
Um, but what you can see from it is this hard edged industrial look. Lots of exposed brick and brick that isn't a facing brick, it's ordinary <coughs> brick that you would put on the backs of buildings and in the interiors of buildings. And that's something that tells you that the Methodists made do with what they had, made do with the best buildings that they could get, because what mattered to them was the fervour of their worship.